I'd like to welcome Margarita Linton, the writer, director, film subject, and co-editor of The Artist's Daughter, Oil on Canvas, Maya Yadlin, the writer and director of An Actor in Killing Ourselves, and Yohonatan Baltzer, the writer and director of Deep Water, three incredible films that for me fall in the category of art imitating life and life imitating art. Welcome Margarita, Maya, and Yohonatan. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Boston. It's such a big honor to be screening The Artist's Daughter in the Jewish Film in the Museum of Fine Arts and to be a part of this amazing Israeli film festival and to be screening with these two really good short films. So thank you very much. And I wish I could be there in person. Margarita, you emigrated to Israel from Ukraine at the age of five. And after completing your military service as a hiking guide, you studied photography and wrote and published poetry. You're a Stam Spiegel Film School graduate and an editor for documentaries, TV series, and short films. You mentor students in editing at two universities, including the Sam Spiegel Film School. The Artist's Daughter received big recognition in 2022 for Best Debut Film at Doc Aviv and the Israeli Documentary Forum Awards, and an Ophir for Best Documentary Film Under 60 Minutes in 2022. We're th thrilled to be presenting the first U.S. screening of your incredible film. Thank you. I'm also thrilled. Very excited. <laughs> Thank you. And for some magic that really wasn't planned, um, Margarita was the editing mentor for Johanna Tan Baltzer, the writer and director of Deep Water. And Margarita, oh. you you mentored Johanna Tan on a previous film, right? So very cool that you're in this program together. Yes, it's very cool and very surprising. And I was... I was actually mentoring Yonatan throughout his first rough cuts of the film. So I was thrilled to see the final cut and to see how great the film became. So it's really exciting. <laughs> nice to Thank meet you out here. Thank you. I'm, I'm also very <laughs> happy and excited to see you in such uh, circumstances uh, again. <laughs> So, hi, Yohonatan. Um, Born in Beit Shemesh in 1992, you're also a Sam Spiegel graduate. In college, you worked as a photographer for a news agency and created a videography workshop for people with social psychosocial disabilities. You're currently a director and content creator for several museums in Israel. You're honored that your Sam Spiegel thesis film, Deep Water, is having its world premiere at our festival. We are too. Welcome. Thank you, Risa. Thank you. It's very exciting, and uh, I'm uh, I'm grateful to be here. Maya Yadlin, thank you, Yohanatan. Like Yohanatan, you were born in 1992. All this young talent. You started studying film in high school and continued your film studies at the Minshar School of Art in Tel Aviv. You're currently a freelance film editor. Most of your films, which have all won awards, are about and with family members. Killing Ourselves is your third short film. It premiered at the Jerusalem Film Festival in 2022 and won the award for Best Short Action Film. You're currently shooting a new short and writing your first feature length film. Welcome, Maya. Hello, thanks for having me and I'm very happy. And I'm curious so, uh, all about this uh, conversation now. So Maya, um, two things I wanna comment about in Killing Ourselves. First, I appreciated getting this naturalistic window into the, the life of a family supporting their film school daughter on her shoot. By the way, I've been there and seeing what it, it felt like very real family dynamics, not all pretty ones playing themselves out on screen, but real ones. What I found very moving and also really quite magical was this big perspective shift when the father and son with the camel suddenly entered the movie. You said it was like this um, naturalistic thing, like what would happen in a desert with camel rides. And to me, I was thinking of these big budget films, you know, of the 60s and 70s, like a big epic film meeting a small film. Um, but this beautiful, like emotional thing that happens in your film when suddenly, because there are two people outside your the family, the father in the movie suddenly speaks through all the bickering of the day of the pride and love he has for his daughters and his family and how they're all in these movies. And that brings to me like what's at root, you know, that there is real love and pride in that family. And then of course the final truth revealed in your closing credits that this is your family. 
So with all that, tell us, congratulations on this wonderful film. Tell us about your inspiration in making it, the writing process, what was drawn from real life and what is fiction? Um, first of all, I must say that I, I'm very, uh, I really, I'm very happy that people even abroad can identify with my family because I really thought at first it's something that is very personal, you know, when you write about yourself or something that is very close to your life. So it's very challenging that because the the story can stay on only in my family and only we can understand it but to see that all also other people can understand that so that really makes me happy and yeah i can say that the story or what i'm writing and the scripts are not um exactly like it happened in in our life but the dynamic is the same dynamic and the dialogue i took from how my parents and how my sister that's that's how how we speak and um and when when i see sometimes situations um you know i i watch it some, sometimes from a side and i'm thinking this is something that can be um a film so i took some situations from our life and made uh, a film about it and Something that I really saw that we have that all the time we when we fight and sometimes someone from outside comes and this is the way for us to see like that we really um care about each other and you know when when we are alone I we don't understand each other and <laughs> that that we we just want to fight and really and also when we are just you know in the car and you you can't run uh, like you're in the desert there is no place to go and run away so you must say stay together and when someone from outside comes it, it just makes sense that we just see something else you know another side of my you know to see then that my father like want to show and to and he start to talk about me and then you know i start like understand him you know i've definitely had that experience with my own father where with all the love he would tell other people he was proud of me more than me so it really resonated like even in the father daughter areas um margarita and Yohanatan, not to put you on the spot but i actually think it might be nice to comment on each other's films if there are thoughts right after we're talking about them mm -hmm. um yeah i mean once you mentioned my once you mentioned like the outsider perspective of the uh of the man on the camel that comes uh alongside with his son in the end of the film i mean it all makes sense uh, suddenly with uh, like the change of the perspective because once once uh, an outsider comes um it brings it brings another light to 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 how you you view yourself as a family i, I thought it was beautiful thank yeah. you yeah um thank you very much yeah i also thought that um the film was very it surprised me all the time it kept surprising me every time i thought i understood the situation or the family dynamics, suddenly something happened and I found myself like laughing out loud by myself um, and actually um, sympathizing with each and every one of your characters. I thought that was very, very well made. And personally, I thought the father, your dad and your mom were just so loving in that way because they were actually really shooting for your film you know it was made uh and even though you it was imitating your life it was still happening at the same time so i could just see all these layers while i was watching and i i thought it was amazing so thank you thank you very much um so yohanatan um as you know i have found deep water to be such an accomplished film i really think you have a feature film there
the femis, the premise is fascinating and unique. We've been talking, as Margarita said as well, about about perspective shifts, and and you said this too in Maya's film. This is what I'm finding in all of your films. This film is so fascinating and unique. It raises all these ethical questions and there's a love story and there's just, there's so much there, so many layers. You you did so much in such a short amount of time and I really cared about Alex and Mai. So Yahonatan, in the spirit of art imitating life and life imitating art, how much of Deep Water was actually drawn from your own experience? Yeah, I mean, quite a lot to be, to be frank. I mean, I did have this, um... I used to write uh, myself uh, some um, academic essays uh, for somebody that I cared for and I, I was like in a relationship with. So um, I guess you could say this is uh, like the seed of the story in a sense. But um, also I think like this conflict that Alex experiences between um, his, uh, his very like, um, he's a man of words, um, but is is very eloquent in his uh, like writings, but once it gets into um one on one like in person experience um social experience is um is very um he's a loner so he he finds it very difficult for him um and I think this conflict of alex i um i think I experience it myself even even if it's it's not like in, in this uh, extreme uh, manner but um in in a more mild way I do think that i uh, identify with it. I think you've tapped into something even generally generationally or and we're even in COVID now being behind screens and with this certain safety. Um, right. And I remember talking to a college counselor some years ago that said a lot of the incoming freshmen in college were more comfortable with online relationships and in-person relationships. So there is really, really something there. And this idea of like really investing in a relationship versus hiding behind mm -hmm. words, right? Um, yeah, it's profound. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think the uh, the relationship between Alex and Mai um, is is like, as you mentioned before, like th there is like this riddle because you mentioned Mai um, is actually quite intelligent in herself, uh, which which Alex di didn't expect her to be so um, well familiar with the with the subject. Um, so I guess um, this enigma of my um, is is what ignites the relationship between the two. And then it's fascinating, you know, when the interview is happening and first Alex is behind the scenes, then he becomes her boyfriend, then he's totally like humiliated for the work that he wrote as though he was a, yeah. a dilettante and just didn't know anything and was just giving easy answers. I mean, you bring up so many emotions in us. Um, they keep changing and changing and changing. So I want to compliment you on that. Again, th the new perspective and plot twist that you used. Thank you, um, thank you, Lisa. Margarita, you're nodding your head. If anybody wants to to talk, continue talking yeah. with you, Anatan, I welcome it. No, I just agree with everything you said, Lisa. I just think that, you know, um, this it's such a special film um, taking place in this world, this art world, and really incorporating it in the plot that way. Um, and I don't know, just for me, it was really special to watch it um, in fine cut like that, because I remember you just beginning to work on it and you had such a clear vision even then and just seeing how you perfected it uh, and how Mai's character, as you said, became so special and so mysterious, intelligent, but, you know, they actually have a, re a very special relationship in this um, in this film. And I think, I also think that Alex is a very special hero. I haven't seen many like, like him and he really got into my heart. Uh, I also think the the use of music is really special and really well made in this film. Um, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> so it was I, great. I, I, I mean, I'm just nodding because <laughs> I'm <laughs> And this is mentor and, and student at one point, and now you're both in a way peers. And this is what's so beautiful, but this was your thesis film, um, Yonatan, so right. wow. I'd like to shift things now to Margarita uh, and the artist daughter oil on canvas, which I again find the title to be so poetic, Margarita. Um, your film is one of the most 
fascinating, moving, and incredible films I've ever seen. Um, Thank you. Wow. I, I, I'm i really blown away by the film. Um, I feel like you made a film. We're going to talk much more, so this is a simple first sentence. But you made a film about the relationship you wanted to have with your father. You know, it's just, it's, it's, I've never seen anything like it. I've now seen your film twice. Um, and actually, by the time this is played, I will have seen it on a big screen. So three times. Um, <laughs> and on the first viewing, I was acutely aware of my experience in watching it. And I bet the same was true for Yohonatan and Maya. I was so aware of it. And it wasn't until the scene where um, you're meeting your father for tea in the mall. And the painter that we've already met is not your father. Your father is painting you that I said, okay, wait, okay. Now I understand. Um, it was only then that I realized, okay, you were meeting with the actor that you had been auditioning with. Um, I kept wanting to believe while I was watching your film that the story was true. And in fact it is. And it's the first question I asked you. I wanted this to be a documentary of its own making. Um, so I'm excited for you to really tell everyone about the making of your film and how everything unfolded starting in 2014. I understand it took you eight years to make the film. Yeah, um, as you said, um, at 2014, my father had a very big retrospect in um, Tel Aviv Museum of Modern Art. And I was used to being a visitor at his exhibitions for many years, but um, this was the biggest one. And it was um, mainly um, about his self-portraits. Um, so for me, it was, um, you know, just an experience. It's hard for me to put it in words, um, you know, to go into three big halls in the museum and to just see my father from every corner, looking at me from every wall in different ages, starting his 30, about being 30 until he's about 60. So 30 years of painting himself. Um, and in that opening, I also met him in person after many years not uh, meeting him. And it was uh, surprisingly such a great experience. He was so charming and so warm and I just wanted more, you know, of that. And in that um, exhibition, Yaniv, my partner, told me that this is the film I should make about us meeting uh, again after all these years through his artwork. And I said, I'm not going to go into that subject. I don't want to touch it. You do the film if you want. <laughs> I said to Yaniv, and then we sort of made it together. But um, at the beginning, my father was really excited about the film and he you know, encouraged us to film the entire exhibition. And we did, and we met um, the curator, Doron Luria, who's like, um, you know, like a mentor for me throughout all these years. And, um, and then after we finished shooting the exhibition and, and all, we wanted to, or I wanted to meet my father again <laughs> and again. And, you know, <laughs> the film was sort of like an excuse for me to, uh, you know, to get to know him. And then I realized the, the real challenge for me is to going to be to meet the man behind the portraits. Uh, because then I started chasing him for a few years. And eventually after a few years, he told me that he's not going to be a part of this film, nor his paintings that I filmed. And I sort of realized that it's not just the film, we're not going to be in touch. And uh, it was a big crisis for me, but in the same time, I also, I could see how maybe his absence is actually a lot more accurate to my documentary life story than his presence. And now maybe the real challenge is how to film this absence and how to tell it because I had a story to tell and we started thinking, we, we gained a lot of inspiration from this crisis. This, this is what I'm trying to say. It was yeah. like a big failure, but it gave us also a very big opportunity for inspiration, for growth. And so we started thinking how to film an absence. 
how how do we tell the story of these years of dodging me and of the actual relationship uh, and then it all started happening you just saw it in the film so it's incredible and i'm curious margarita in terms of, you know, it was really cool seeing you recording with Shlomo, the actor who I believe knew your father and knows your father. You know, were you recording real dialogue? Were you recording the phone calls with your dad? You, I'm curious about that process and the rehearsals and stuff. Yeah. So um, even before he said no, uh, it was years of trying to meet him. And, I, mm -hmm. and at one point I realized that maybe these phone calls are the relationship. Maybe this is what I will have. So I started writing and I started writing the phone calls as we were speaking or even after, because, you know, I'm a writer for me, it's easy. And also he, um, how do you say it in English? Um, he says the same things many times, like he repeats himself. So the, the conversations, they repeat themselves. So I just wrote, like a script all the conversations and after he said no and I went through this process of deciding I want to make the film anyway I started writing a new script with these dialogues between us um, which is the actual relationship we have or don't have I don't know so and then when I when we casted Shlomo I started rehearsing with him based on these conversations. And he was actually an amazing partner. Uh, it was a very therapeutic to work with him. He's so warm and so loving and so loyal. And he knows my father personally, and he's like a big fan. Uh, so it was easy to get him to play this role. Um, so yeah, this is about oh the conversation. So, tell us about has your father seen the film and if so what was his reaction and and yeah. yes it's a good question um so uh my father was one of the first people to see the film when it was uh done we had a um, world premiere in hot docs last year in canada and we knew that before the film meets an audience for the first time we have to show it to him of course, I invited him to my house to watch it and he didn't show up. So we sent him a link <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were, all of us, we were positive that it would be a big crisis and a scandal. And we were just thinking, I was, every word in the film was like what thought out. I was thinking, how will he react? And I was really surprised when he really loved the film. He called uh, many times when I was on the plane to Canada. And then he said it was just spectacular. He loved it. He thought it was, um, I was surprised to see that he looked at it from the point of view of an artist. He didn't take it personally. He thought it was very well made. He liked my character. His favorite thing was Shlomo. <laughs> he said he did him exactly like he was a great actor and they are now friends. Shlomo already visited his studio many times. So he really liked it. He said it was a very good self-portrait, he thought, and he was glad that his paintings were not a part of it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it was a surprise and I'm glad he liked it. That's profound what you said, that it was an interesting self-portrait, that you made a self-portrait. You know, I think that's a very nice um, use of words. Very quick question for quick answer, and then we'll bring in Yohanatan and Maya in whichever order. Um, do you have a relationship with your dad now? Did the making of the film and him seeing the film impact? Is he in your life a little more now or how are things? If you're comfortable sharing. Yes, yes, I'm comfortable sharing. Um, it's also very interesting how it went, how it happened because uh, making the film uh, was a part of this need I had to get to know him and to be in a relationship with him. But while I was making it, it took me eight years and um, I sort of lost the need to be in a relationship with him. Like when I finished the movie, I felt like I was free of the relationship and no hard feelings. Like I could understand him now. I could 
accept. I even finished the film with acceptance. Um, so many people ask me if I accept uh, the rejection and it's not that. I could never accept such, uh, re such rejection, but I do accept the way things are and I accept myself and I accept him. And after this happened, suddenly something um, opened up between us and now we're a lot more in touch. Like he calls, he even visited us twice. Uh, it's interesting, it's very interesting. Wow. Um, I'm told we kind of have to wrap up. Are there any last thoughts from our other distinguished filmmakers before we do? Mm -hmm. It could be on Margarita's film or anything. Um, I can't imagine how it was for you to take something from, you know, because I know it from my personal um, uh, films that you take something from something from me life and for you to take something that I don't know, eight years, it's something that I can't understand how you can deal with something eight years, like it's really exhausting and really the feeling that you really want to make your film is something that is very strong for us as filmmakers. But at the same time, this is something that is so personal for you and it really changed things in your personal life. And really that sounds really challenging and really to take something um, from life and to take the risk that it will change something in in life, it's amazing, and I really admire you yeah, that you could you could do that. Thank you. I just I just wanted to to add that um, it, it was I was very moved by the film, and I, I think like this act that Maya mentioned of um, of um, this this uh, cinematic act um, to to connect uh, to connect with your father uh, through this film. Um, and as you say, like to, to embody the, the absence itself or the or, or your um your uh, want for relationship with your father is uh, it's very it's, it was very touching and I was very, very um moved by it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. And thank wow. you, the audience. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have to say this is Thank you for this incredible conversation, for your art, for giving us your hearts and sharing so much um, of the inspiration behind your films um, on behalf of Boston Jewish Film and the Boston Israeli Film Festival. Thank you for being with us. Thanks to all of you at the MFA for staying with us. Um, and we'll see you soon.